Good morning, good everybody. Morning. It's a good morning for a cup of tea because it's kind of cold outside. Yeah, cold and stormy. Welcome to our home. And yes, we're still here despite some terrorist death threats. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting that if this Barak is truly a Jehovah Witness, what's in his heart when he wants to come after somebody with an AK-47? He That's what's in the hearts of Jehovah's Witnesses. They have this veneer of being nice and loving and kind and understanding and everything else, but you, pe you peel away that facade and there's truly hate in their heart. Well, I mean, what got him so upset, and apparently we hit a nerve because he says, you're liars because no elders would send you guys this information. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did it ever dawn on you that maybe it's elders' wives who are fully awake sending us stuff? Or maybe there are elders awake sending us stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. It, it just shows what's truly beneath the service, and it's, and it's hate. Yeah. For anybody and everybody, unless you're a Jehovah yourself. Yeah. If you're a Jehovah yourself, then, oh, there's all kinds of love. Yeah, right. We're going to show something different here. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, I want to thank Deep Throat. Thank you so much, sweetie. Because in one of our videos, we were talking about the YMCA. And uh, there's been a lot of, you know, back and forth over that. You know, we even know of some Jehovah's Witnesses that go use the pool at the YMCA and think yeah. nothing of it. Which kind of puts a red flag up for their marriage mate who never was a Jehovah Witness because they hear our videos. And it's like, wait a minute. So, Matt, this is for you, sweetie. Yeah. And as we develop this, just keep in mind that when my daughter and our son-in-law wanted to get married, we want, they wanted to have their wedding in an old, rundown Spanish mission. And the elder said, well, we can't have the wedding there because it used to be, it used to be a Catholic, you know, mission, a Spanish Back in the mission. Back the 1500s. Yeah. So because of that, because of what it used to be, um, my kids couldn't get married there. And what we're going to present about the YMCA shows how stupid and ridiculous the thought processes are of Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, the thing is, too, is Watchtower has no qualms about going and buying old churches and converting and, them to kingdom halls. Yeah, we've already done a video <laughs> on, on that also. They have no problem with that. So this... This yeah. is, shows how stupid these people really are and how stupid and idiotic they think. Yeah. Fast Eddie, thank you so much for the Pioneer book. Um, we really appreciate it. There's some gems in here. And I know we've done some videos in the past. Yeah, with you mine. Know, about that. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we're sorry about the loss of your dad. Um, also, we just have a couple of quick things here. Um... Rhonda, it was nice hearing from you. She says, I was studying with the JWs and left. I thought there was something wrong with me. LOL. It's not you. Nope. nope, it's them. I was studying with them for a little over a year, and by the grace of God, I ran into you all's YouTube channel. I want to thank you so very much for all the hard work you and your friends do to put the real truth out there. So I don't know if I count as a nail, but I'm so happy that I can now say I'm done with those nut jobs. <laughs> Rhonda, I know you don't qualify for a nail in the coffin, but we wanted to give you a shout out. Yes. And let everybody know. Yes. It's another, another Watchtower one. study gone. Pull away from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. really, when when you really look at the the in depth stuff that Watchtower writes, and if you pay keen attention, you can't help see that they contradict themselves. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm going to read a line from the uh, 1971 Watchtower, November 15th, pages 681 through 687. It's entitled, Theocratic Organization Amidst Democracies and Communism. This is what they wrote in paragraph 4. Jehovah's organization is in no wise democratic. Jehovah is supreme, and his government or organization is strictly theocratic. The conclusion is not open to successful contradiction? Wait a minute. 
If somebody successfully contradicts you, then that becomes a fact, doesn't it, Watchtower? What moron was stupid enough to put these two words together? Th this conclusion is not open to successful contradiction. Wait, do you people see how stupid and idiotic these writers of Watchtower are? It's, it, it's just incredible. It, my goodness, even a, th even a third grader can understand that those two words don't go to get a successful contradiction. It's not open to successful contradiction. How, how idiotic. <laughs> God, <laughs> the, the stupidity is overwhelming. Now we want to thank Clark. Thank you, sweetie, so much for sending us to sending us this information. Um, in harmony, this is uh, what went out to several. In harmony with Jesus' words at John 6, 12, so that nothing is wasted, we would like to announce a new location where you can purchase items that were used during the construction of the New World Headquarters at Warwick, New York. All funds recouped in this matter will be used to support the wild, worldwide work slash, I'm going to add this in, child abuse lawsuits. The pedophile fund. Yeah. Yeah, worldwide yeah, work. Exactly. World, yeah, that is worldwide work. They're paying off victims. Yeah. But I mean, how desperate that you're going to put all this stuff that was used during the construction up for sale? Yeah, I mean, what if they want to build, you know, something out on the East Coast? You know, like in California, you know, maybe a small branch or something, you know, three, four thousand miles away. They're going to have to repurchase all that equipment again. Hey, Jehovah's Witnesses, do you really comprehend where your money's going? Well, it sounds like they're having a yard sale. Yeah. So here's the address. Going on. You may visit at the former dairy barn at Watchtower Farms, 900 Red Mills Road, Walk Hill, New York. Hours of operation are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday. We will open this location August 20, 2016, and plan to remain open through December 2016. You may also purchase tools, equipment, vehicles, and building materials via our website, www.used-tools-equipment.com. If you have any questions, please call us. Please do not post this information on Kingdom Hall information boards. You know why? Because then the witnesses would realize, oh my God, it's they're having a yard sale trying to raise money. No, yeah, I, I, I get it, and I see the absolute humor, but Watchtower, <laughs> you can make a hell of a lot more money. Instead of selling that equipment, open up a rental yard. And you can make more money renting that same piece of equipment time and time and time again. And I'll even tell you where you can make more money selling, uh, renting equipment. You can make a, a shit pot full of money in renting water trucks and backhoes. I know, because I got 14 years experience in the rental equipment industry. I know where the money's to be made in renting equipment. Yeah. Okay, now... I know this is going to be a long video, but we just had so much to try to cram in here because the kids are coming this weekend, so this may be the only video we have time to do this weekend. I am reading Faith on the March. It is written by A.H. McMillan. Now, many of you may recognize that name as someone who was very prominent in the organization during Russell and Rutherford's time. And... Um, I believe this was written in 1950, 1957. Now, Macmillan was a very zealous, gung-ho witness. So this book, um, it even says, My Life of Joyous Service with Jehovah's Witnesses. So, And the foreword <laughs> is by President Nathan Knorr. How special. Mm-hmm. So here on page 47, under chapter 4, I just wanted to read, just highlight just a few things. It's like, why didn't someone like this wake up? I, yeah, I don't know. Wonder. Yeah. So in the first full paragraph, on August 23rd, 1914, as I well recall, Pastor Russell started on a trip to the northwest down the Pacific coast and over into the southern states. He went through all of this in New York where we held the convention September 27th through the 30th. That was a highly interesting time because a few of us seriously thought we were going to heaven during the first week of that October. At that Saratoga Springs convention, quite a number were in attendance. 
Wednesday, September 30th, I was invited to talk on the subject, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, let us be sober, watchful, and pray. Well, as one would say, that was down my road. I believed it myself sincerely that the church was going home in October. During that discourse, I made this unfortunate remark. <laughs> this is probably the last public address I shall ever deliver because we will be going home soon. So then it talks about them going back home to New York. And uh, then it talks about October 2nd when Russell came downstairs and said, uh, the Gentile times have ended, the kings have had their day. Then the next subheading is the wrong thing at the right time. If later it should be demonstrated, this, okay, this is a quote by C.T. Russell as the year 1914 was just beginning. If later it should be demonstrated that the church is not glorified by October 1914, we shall try to feel content with whatever the Lord's will may be. We believe that the chronology is a blessing. If it should wake us earlier in the morning than we would otherwise have waked, well and good. If October 1914, 1915 should pass and we should find ourselves still here and matters going on very much as they are at present, then we would think, have we been expecting the wrong thing at the right time? The Lord's will might permit this. But I mean, it just goes on and on, you know, of how they believed, you know, that 1874 and all this. Now, there's a point to this because we're going to get into that right now. I've got the July 1st, 1973 Watchtower. Oh, there's my post-it note I was looking for. <laughs> okay, July 1st, 1973, page 402, starting paragraph 4. Consider, too, the fact that Jehovah's organization alone in all the earth is directed by God's Holy Spirit or act of force. Only this organization functions for Jehovah's purpose and to His praise. To it alone God's sacred word, the Bible, is not a sealed book. Many persons of the world are very intelligent, capable of understanding complex matters. They can read the Holy Scriptures, but they cannot understand their deep meaning. Here again, you see how Watchtower um, discredits anybody even wanting to try to understand Scripture, and yet... Just like Anthony Morris in a video that we just uploaded recently, he said that the world can't understand the Bible, the world don't read the Bible. This is something that has been progressively thrown in amongst Jehovah's Witnesses so that when they come and knock at your door, they are truly convinced that you behind the door are, are ignorant, that you don't know nothing about the Bible, and that, here again... God's organization, Jehovah's Witnesses alone only have the truth. Well, that's what all cults preach. Yet God's people can comprehend such spiritual things. Why? Not because of special intelligence on their part, but as the Apostle Paul declared, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.10, For it is to us God has revealed them through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches into all things, even the deep things of God. Where's, where's that... Where's that? Where's that thing that I read earlier? Uh, talk about uh, successful. This conclusion is not open to successful contradiction. Um, it says right here, yet God's people can comprehend such spiritual things. In your reasoning book, you wrote that the generation that saw the beginning would still be here to see the end. That generation is dead and gone. I have a successful contradiction watchtower. You lose. <laughs> Back to the article. Good one, dear. Thank you. How very much true Christians appreciate associating with the only organization on earth that understands the deep things of God. But yet, that generation that will not pass away was a very deep thing of God. Wasn't it, Jehovah's Witnesses? Ah, there's another successful contradiction. I mean, here again, I mean, only Jehovah's Witnesses understood that those that saw the beginning would still be here to see the end. Oh, and you're gonna, they're dead and gone. Oh, you're going to love this next sentence okay. then. All right. The beginning of paragraph five. Direction by God's Spirit enables Jehovah's servants to have divine light 
in a world of spiritual yeah. darkness. <laughs> well, well, looks like they were pretty dark when they started printing the stuff about the generation of 1914, huh? They, they were very much in the dark, and they still are. Yeah. It gets better, dear. Oh, no, I don't know if my heart can take this today. Especially, he's out of M&M's. Oh, it. it's a bad day. Okay, if I remember right, they are still studying this in the book study. This book was released in 2014. It's called God's Kingdom Rules. And we're going to go over to page 50. To this. Oh, you're going to love this one. <laughs> You guys might want to turn down the volume. I think there's a rant coming in the future. <laughs> it just might be. Page 50. The subheading, Understanding a Pivotal Year. <laughs> <laughs> pivotal. Let me guess. Is that 1914? Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Pivotal, people. This is a pivotal year. There can be no successful contradiction here. <laughs> Paragraph 5. <laughs> As we saw in chapter 2 of this book, the Bible students spent decades pointing out that the year 1914 would be significant in fulfilling Bible prophecy. However, at that time, they believed that Christ's presence had begun in 1874. <laughs> yeah. That he had begun to rule in heaven in 1878, and that the kingdom would not be fully set up until October 1914. The harvest would extend from 1874 to 1914 and would culminate in the gathering of the anointed to heaven. So they admit. Oh yeah, they, yeah. they admit what they used to believe. Well, they're still admitting what Macmillan printed in his yeah. book too. That's why I read, you know, that one yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Do mistaken ideas such as these cast doubt on whether Jesus was guiding those faithful ones by means of Holy Spirit? Absolutely, they, they do. <laughs> Not at all! <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, wait a minute. Watchtower, are you trying to pass this off as a successful contradiction by saying, not at all? <laughs> Paragraph 6, not at all. Think again of our open, opening illustration, which was at the beginning of the chapter about a tour guide. Yeah. Would the premature ideas and eager questions of the tourists cast doubt on the reliability of their guide? <laughs> of Hardly! Course. Oh, geez. There's another successful contradiction. <laughs> Similarly, although God's people... Okay, now here it comes. Although God's people sometimes try to work out details of Jehovah's purpose before it is time for the Holy Spirit to guide them to such truths, it is clear that Jesus is leading them. Thus, faithful ones prove willing to be corrected and humbly adjust their views. Okay, now wait a tick. Before it is time for the Holy Spirit to guide them. So what happens when a rank and file like Mike and I go yeah. ask the elders a question and say, wait a minute, you know, the scripture at Hebrews 1.13 says that Jesus cannot possibly be an angel, Michael the archangel, Yeah. and they go ballistic and disfellowship you. I mean... Well, <laughs> well, what they'll do is they'll use the terminology, you can't run ahead of the governing body, uh, uh, you can't run ahead of the Holy Spirit. Yeah as a member of the rank and file. But here's something that you need to consider. If you are a Jehovah's Witness and you are professing to be one of the anointed, you know, the faithful slave, the faithful and discreet slave, that terminology includes all of the 144,000. As a member of the 144,000, you are placing yourselves above the very law that you enforce upon the rank and file when they use scripture and you perceive that they're running ahead of the faithful and discreet slave, or excuse me again, the Holy Spirit. Comprehend what I just said if you're, you know, of the 144,000. By extension, every time an elder disfellowships a rank and file member for presumably running ahead of the Holy Spirit, you yourselves as the 144,000 do it all the time and nobody holds you accountable. Why is it that you can place yourself above the very laws that you set out for the rank and file? 
That sounds like what's going on in the political arena today, doesn't it? The same very people that sets the laws for the United States of America are not being held accountable to the very laws when they themselves break it. The hypocrisy is astounding. Well, I find it interesting that Watchtower is actually admitting in this paragraph that at times they have run ahead of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. That's exactly what they're admitting. Yeah. Okay, now here's something interesting in uh, paragraph 7. In the years following 1919, God's people were blessed with more and more flashes of spiritual light. In 1925, a landmark article appeared in the Watchtower entitled what? Birth of what? the Nation. What? what? Read that again. In 1925, they, okay, a in landmark article. article. Here comes a successful contradiction, Jehovah's Witnesses. If you are a rank and file member and you decide to go to a 19, I don't say a 36, 1951 watchtower, 25, 1925 watchtower, and you try to show the elders where watchtowers contradicted themselves, you will get hammered. You will get beat back into place for using old, old light. Oh, we can't, you know, that's old light, people. You know, we are a progressive. We are a progressive organization. This mag, this publication was printed in what year? 20, 2014. 2014. And yet they refer to old light as if it's still burning and valid. There's another successful contradiction, Watchtower. Because what you won't allow the rank and file to do, you yourselves do. Yeah. Well, my goodness, even the stupidity of these people is just astounding. Well, even in 1947 Awake, if you take that article about excommunication where Watchtower right. is bashing the Catholic Church what? for disfellowshipping and excommunicating members, and they give scriptural reason, if you take that article and say, this is what Watchtower printed, you're the one that's going to be told, you know, you can't continue in this line of questioning right. it's old light you know it doesn't matter what they said back then it's old light and in that article still says that article says that excommunication and i don't care if you call it excommunication disfellowship or shunning the end results are absolutely the the same and in that article they said that excommunication is a pagan practice now i want a rank and file member to put me hey Barack, you want to take an AK-47 and do me in. Well, why don't you take that 1947 watchtower to one of your flipping elders and tell them that, this, that the disfellowshipping practice is paganism and see where you stand, buddy old pal. Okay, so back to the paragraph. In 1925, a landmark article appeared in the watchtower entitled Birth of the Nation. It laid out convincing scriptural evidence that the Messianic Kingdom had been born in 1914, fulfilling the prophetic picture of God's heavenly woman giving birth as recorded in Revelation chapter 12. Now what's interesting is they have a little footnote here. The footnote says, Before then, it was thought that the vision pointed to a war between pagan Rome and papal Rome. <laughs> so they ran against a, a, a head of the Holy Spirit again. Yep. Jeez. Yep. Okay, okay now, now to deep for throats, some more YMCA yeah, for some more successful contradictions. Yes, you can see Watchtower has successfully contradicted itself in this one regarding the YMCA. Oh yeah. See, you've successfully contradicted yourself, Watchtower. Yeah. So I have a Bond volume here. This is the January first, nineteen seventy nine Watchtower. And again, thank you to our good friend Deep Throat. Yeah, page for your, thirty. For your research and every and again, thanks to everybody that is doing this because yeah. we don't mind being the face in front of the camera and highlighting your your research. Yeah, we don't Everybody's mind at all. Everybody's been great. You know, we it, appreciate all of it. Because it shows collectively that we are the resistance against Watchtower. And yeah. at some point, this resistance against Watchtower is going to make their walls crumble. Okay, so page 30, questions from readers. Is it true that for religious reasons, Jehovah's Witnesses may not become members of the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association? 
Good question. And like I said, Matt, this is for you, sweetie. Yes, that is so. We have long recognized that the YMCA, though not being a church as such, is definitely aligned with the religious organizations of Christendom in efforts to promote interfaith. Repeat that line again. We have long recognized. We have long recognized Watchtower. Oh, yeah. Really? Re long recognized. Remember that phrase, people. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Religious organizations of Christendom and efforts to promote interfaith. In September of 1885, you guys will find this one. Old, old light again. Now here again, they're validating an older Watchtower article. Well, yeah, because it pushes their agenda and their doctrines, but if you bring something else up, up from the 1800s, it doesn't to, matter anymore. To provide a successful contradiction. Yeah. Or what about saying Russell was the faithful and discreet yeah. slave? They've thrown him <laughs> under the bus over that, too. Okay. In September 1885, the Watchtower took this position. <laughs> Alas, for the Bible-rearing practice in the YMCA's, they are completely under the control of the sectarians by whom they are supported, though professedly non-sectarian, professedly controlled by no creed but the Bible. They are more creed-bound than others, since they are bound by all the popular creeds. <laughs> okay, then it goes on to say that later in the underlying religious purpose and interfaith efforts of the YMCA were mentioned in the September 1964 issue of the Kingdom Ministry, uh, used by Jehovah's Witnesses in one of their meetings. And uh, so they just go on to talk about how bad the YMCA is. Because we wanted to bring this out just in case some who don't realize that Watchtower has bashed the YMCA. And I'm going to say that again. Is it true that for religious reasons, Jehovah's Witnesses may not become members of the YMCA? Yes, that is so. Okay, now working backwards. <clears throat> now keep in mind the earlier statement about my children wanting to be married in an old, run-down Spanish mission that's nothing but ruins. It was a it's, pile of rocks. It was, it was just a pile of rocks. Okay, inside of the news, November 15th, 1974, Watchtower, page 684. We're working backwards with this one, folks. Because remember, it has long been held all the way back to 1885 that the Jehovah's Witnesses have held a very strict position about the YMCA, okay, and it's interfaith. So they're letting Jehovah's Witnesses know that you cannot use the YMCA even if you just want to swim. You can't do it. Now this is another reason why they bash the use of the YMCA and it's typical Watchtower fashion. They do not cite the source and there's a bunch of ellipses in it. Again, inside of the news, November 15th, 1974, Watchtower, page 684. The Young Men's Christian Association, better known as the YMCA or the Y, began as a means for providing rooming and recreation amid Christian surroundings. A report in the National Observer, 19, um, National Observer, September 7th, 1974, however, indicates that the YMCA faces a serious problem homosexuality. One prominent homosexual is quoted as saying, wise are ideal because there is a largely male atmosphere, often younger men, dot dot dot, and often men who are open and not merely receptive but willing to seek sexual encounters. So we can kind of see that Watchtower right there is beginning to bash the YMCA as a place that Christian men don't want to be there. Okay? And they even quote further from that article, a member of the YMCA for six years in the 1920s, he writes that he gave up the membership after I was robbed several times, assaulted twice, and propositioned many times. So again, they're painting the YMCA in a very bad light. Though protesting any implication that the problem is major, one Executive direct, director of the YMCA wrote, again, you know, not quoting names, not, not giving names. They're not really citing a true source when you're not given a name who you're quoting. I, 
as well as all other YMCA professionals recognize that we do have the problem of the homosexual in the ranks of the YMCA membership. A, a New York director said, we can't make room checks every night. Sometimes we gulp and admit those we might have disapprove of, realizing that we can provide them not only with a bed, but with a chance for counseling and other help. There's just one more short paragraph. Watchtower ends it with 1 Corinthians 5, 6. A little leaven ferments the whole lump. So Watchtower on this inside of the news makes no waste, no hesitation in showing another reason why you shouldn't go to the YMCA because of its homosexual influence. So it's not just now the Christian influence that should keep the Jehovah Witness away from the YMCA, but now the homosexual influence should be enough to keep the Jehovah Witness man away from the YMCA. So I think we've proven, Mikey, at this point of how Watchtower feels about the YMCA. So I am going to... <laughs> Here comes the successful contradiction. These are your words, Watchtower. This is these, your bon volume. These are your experiences, idiot boys. July 15th, 1951, page 429. But this is old light. So just remember, this is as much old light as that 1885 85 old light article. Because it's a long-standing feeling of it's them against the YMCA. Exactly. Or is it? Okay. But that's different. Okay, the bottom of page 429, in the first column down at the bottom, about... Oh, a third of the way down. At 3.30, Brother Henschel spoke and his talk was interpreted in both Indonesia and Dutch. I then summed up for 45 minutes with two interpreters. The Wait for it! <laughs> the meetings were held at the YMCA. <laughs> Go ahead. And 37 were present. <laughs> so they they held a, a Jehovah Witness meeting where in a YMCA? Wow! Watch, but you know what? That wasn't the only time you did that. Well, I was idiots. just going to ask. Was that a one-time thing? No. Here's the um, let's see. This is the August first, nineteen fifty-seven Watchtower, page four seventy-eight. Now there is a long list of countries that are um, referred to here. Assemblies. And I can't, yeah, I, I can't pronounce them all. But inexorably, if I'm pronouncing that right, as with all assemblies, the final day of the Manila Assembly arrived. A crowd, um, a crowded day it was. Baptism. Baptism. Is it sinking in, Barack, where I'm going with this? <laughs> Baptism was scheduled as the first thing in the morning. The questions directed to the candidates for baptism to determine their worthiness for their it. Worthiness? Their worth. Yeah, their worthiness. worthiness. Yeah, their worthiness for it were asked in as many a dialects as were spoken by the candidates. Besides in English... Okay, you could probably bypass Yeah, I'm going to bypass because there's several, several of them. <laughs> in spite of the differences of language, all were alike in being dedicated to the same God, Jehovah, and in understanding His kingdom truth. Accordingly, 279 were favored with baptism in the YMCA swimming pool. Not far from... The, Rise, the Risel Stadium, where 6,572 had heard them answer the decisive questions affirmatively. Now, it's okay to make water in the pool of the YMCA a holy water by baptizing Jehovah's Witnesses after you've condemned the use of the building? Oh, but that's different because now with... With this Jehovah Spirit present, we're going to make the YMCA pool water holy water. But yet, you can't get married in an ancient 
building that used to be a mission? But that's different. Do you see the hypocrisy? Watchtower, you have successfully contradicted yourself. <laughs> Do you see how stupid this religion is? If you pay attention, if you know what they write and how they go around condemning everything as being bad like the YMCA, and they'll give you several reasons for it leading up to and also including the homosexual atmosphere, then they turn around and write an article where they baptize Jehovah's Witnesses in the swimming pool of a YMCA. Yeah, I mean, this, this is how freaking stupid this religion is. If you Jehovah's Witnesses could just see the depth of what you're involved in, like Kim and I, you'd have no problem walking away from it because you would learn to value your freedom more than the bullshit that these guys have printed over the, over the centuries. The thing is, is there's one good thing we, well, one of the good things that we have Watchtower to thank for is because for the past 49 years, I was taught how to do research into Watchtower literature. And how to think. Yes. And how to go look stuff up, how to use their library, how to use their CD-ROM. So, um, as many of us have. And yeah. same thing with Deep Throat. You know, yep. same thing. He was trained how to research, research this and use their history to bring out what you want to bring out. Yeah. So, we've but, been taught very well how to do this. Yeah. And the thing though that we have not been taught and we did a video recently on this where the apostle paul encourages encourages the young minister timothy not to let anybody look down on his youth paul is telling timothy and we should all learn the same principle stand up for yourself even if it means having to walk away from what you consider a solid foundation in the faith. Because this Watchtown Bible Tract Society is not the solid foundation in the faith that you Jehovah's Witnesses think it is. It's not at all. This foundation is crumbling. And every time somebody like Kim and I or anyone else doing a YouTube video can show conclusively from their own literature that not only can the apostate successfully contradict them, the watchtower successfully contradicts themselves also. And there's the dichotomy. Because if, if the apostates can successfully contradict them and watchtower can successfully contradict themselves, then Jehovah's Witnesses, you don't have nothing but a bag full of shit. It's just smoke and mirrors. It's smoke and mirrors. That's exactly what it is. So, for them to say that they are guided by the Holy Spirit, like we read from that watchtower, and, you know, their whole organization is guided by the Holy Spirit, and then when you read in their own book, where they admit that at times they have gone ahead of the Holy Spirit, you know, to work hard to figure out what Jehovah has purposed for them, I mean, it's just, wow, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable unbelievable so thank you everybody for watching and um thank you everybody for subscribing and uh, please feel free to share these wherever you yeah. know you want and um we really appreciate everything you all yeah. do for us you know the love and support and the research you know and so many of you to thank and uh so many you know new new ones coming out that <laughs> yeah it's, it's yeah the emails but i am about halfway through august emails so those you know i will answer i will answer don't laugh it's not funny no it's just it's just watchtower i really hope you're comprehending yeah and i, I hope you're really comprehending and i appreciate so much so many of you you know offering to help me with my emails but unfortunately, I feel very strongly about this, that many of these people contacting us um, are still current Jehovah's Witnesses. Some are still current elders. Some are still current, you know, regular pioneers. And there's a confidentiality, you know. Yeah. So I appreciate your offers so much. 
but unfortunately, you know, I'm the only one that, you know, can answer these because of the confidentiality, you know, factor. I have a lot of confidential, you know, stuff on my computer. So, you know, it's another reason why, you know, I, yeah. you know, I, I appreciate the offers, though. Yeah, really thank appreciate you. it. Thank I mean, you. It just shows that we can, as ex-members, and even some non-Jehovah's Witnesses that are willing to join the resistance, thank you for your love and support also because it means a lot to us that not only are we w helping to wake up Jehovah's Witnesses, but those that are non-Jehovah's Witnesses are willing to do the same thing. And this is truly a united effort from not just ex-members, but from those who profess a Christianity and can see the path of destruction that you Jehovah's Witnesses are absolutely on. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, some more have sent us literature. And what I'm doing is um, trying to help others get what they need. Um, I have duplicates and triplicates and quadruple you know, copies of stuff I already have. And so I've started listing some of that on eBay, you know, for really cheap. You know, I start the listings, most of them at like $1.49, you know, just to cover the listing fee mm -hmm. and seller fee. And uh, then all I ask is you just to pay the shipping. And so if you guys need anything, you know, go check out um, on eBay. It's Lame Beaver Trading Co. C.O. And... Um, I've got a bunch that I'm putting on there, like I said, a duplicates and triplicates that we already have. And so I want to help others who are wanting some of the older literature. You know, and if you don't see anything in my list, um, just contact me through eBay and um, I might have it because I've got stuff stacked up here on the floor behind us. And so I want to help others get, you know, the literature. So. Okay. So. Kids are going to be here soon, so we hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you later. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.